Today we're talking about Spider-Man 2, Ron Howard and the Han Solo, and what is Team J. Miller up to? This is the trailer park. What's up, everybody? This is The Trailer Park, the official movie podcast of Wampuslayer.com. I am Dave. I am the Mike. And we are your hosts. Uh, this podcast, of course, is always brought to you by Audible.com. If you'd like, you can go to audibletrial.com slash Wampuslayer to get yourself a free 30-day trial and a free audio book. So, like I said, did I say it was the official movie podcast? I yes. Think I, okay, yeah. Then we covered that. I'm going to the one. See, if you watched this last week, <laughs> we were unprepared. Now I'm a little overprepared. Hey, shout out to my brother Tom. He watched this last week. Awesome. He, po- he pointed out the er- uh, the audio error that we had with the uh, not syncing. Oh up. yeah, yeah. We're gonna try but to fix means, it this week. That means he watched it. So if I'm looking at you and talking to you and it matches, <laughs> then we're good. Yes, that means um, we fixed it. So there was a ton of movie news that came out this week. Yeah, like a lot. And then a lot that came out like in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Before we recorded A couple this. of the things I added. I don't know if you looked at the drive. I, I added a couple not. little things So there. if we've got a moment, I'm just going to point to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do want to follow up on two things we did last week. Um, number one, we talked about Spider-Man yes. and its part in the MCU. Um, a couple new pieces of Spider-Man news came out. Um, number one, and this is the one that I wanted to ask you about. So Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, they said Homecoming 2. I doubt it would be called Homecoming 2. I'm it sure it would be called Spider-Man yeah. Something. The Dark World, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> the Winter Soldier? What is it? No, I'm sorry. Turn Off the Dark. That was the, the show. Um, <laughs> but it will be the first post-Infinity War, so the first Phase 4 oh, okay. film. Skipping over a lot of films that have been set up for Phase 4. So Ant-Man and the Wasp, not coming. We don't have any date for that. So, Doctor Strange 2, nothing. Uh, what else would there be? Captain Marvel and Black Panther are finishing up Phase 3, right? Yeah. Well, no, Captain Marvel is still... Yeah, that one's still far off. We don't have yeah. any idea, anything about that. Inhumans has been canceled, and that's been made into a show. Which looks all right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, what it, is this a... Because they've also... Kevin Feige has also talked about Spider-Man being the new Tony Stark, as far as the thing that holds... The, that the is glue. the continuity yeah. of, the, of the new Avengers. So, I mean, is this a... Are they really expecting Spider-Man to be the like the crux of this whole thing? The, yeah, but they, well, I don't see why he couldn't be. Right. It, but... Given his popularity as a character, and especially with the new way that the MCU is doing movies, they really haven't had any missteps since Iron Man, the first Iron Man came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really... I mean, yeah, because eventually Robert Downey Jr., they keep signing him, and we get the same Tony Stark, but the way comics work, and they say fresh, is you reboot with new... So Tony Stark can always be a guy, but you're eventually going to show other people. You right. Know? At some point, Sam Wilson takes over as being Captain America. It's true. But so. I feel like when they talk about him being like they want Peter Parker to be the that guy that keeps showing up. The kind flagship of thing, guy. We don't. I mean, Spider-Man's a cool oh, character. That, no. But we yeah. don't. I'm like Peter Parker. I'm like, that's not the guy I'm going to go. Oh, look who showed up. Right. I'm not. I'm not even looking for Iron Man in the suit. It's yeah. Robert Downey Jr. that that just clicked so much with audiences, yeah. even far, yeah, far bigger than the character. When you put it that way, I don't think Tom Holland has that ability. No. But, I mean, I guess we're going to find Spider-Man out Spider-Man as a character has that ability. Yeah. If he just keeps showing, if he just keeps showing up as, like, you know, he's, you know, because he's a street, he, honestly, he's a street-level hero. Right. That has, I mean, he's super powerful, but he's still considered one of yeah. the street level. He just keeps getting pulled into If larger... you look at the original Civil War, and on the little off topic, but real quick, the l- original Civil War comics he was called he wasn't uh, you know he's part of it but he was still considered one of the street level guys right he's not an avenger he never really have uh, he kind of has been but he was you know he's a teenager that tony stark pretty much put on tv and said yeah tell people who you are like oh okay yeah like they, they, they didn't shy away from that so right. yeah as 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 an actor probably not that's not the, the one you i would choose but as a character absolutely Spider-Man it's true. could be that guy because he's Spider-Man. It's true. I mean, they, Kevin Feige has said that they're they're playing everything Phase Four very close to the chest. That you won't. It it not even until the Infinity War title for the second movie Which has no name is going is released will you know anything about Phase Four. So they're they're keeping that real tight because it's well, they don't know the, where the, they're doing. Well, that in the spoiler they say that the name itself is a spoiler, right? But I'm saying it's Phase Four. You know, you're they're about to end a 22 movie 
arc. It's still 12 years or so? Now, yeah. Or 10 years? You know, the, all eyes will be on what can they do to recreate that or reboot it, and I don't think they want that attention no, being pulled away from No, they need to be Avengers. able to actually do it. Yeah. Uh, the other one was we talked about Chris Miller and Phil Lord being pulled away from Han Solo, Han Solo uh, which I guess there's been some new information coming out. First, it was creative di- differences. Now, Lucasfilm is saying something. There was a report that it was too silly that they made Han Solo into this kind of Ace Ventura character. Which I could see yeah. those two. It's like, true. Like, we, like I talked about last week with the fact that 21 Jump Street is an action comedy. Heavily focused on the comedy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, of course he's, he was replaced very quickly, or at least we, as far as we see very yeah, quickly, was, they could have had that in mind for a long time, but Academy Award winner, Ron Howard. Yeah. That's gonna be taken pretty over. intense. So Ron Howard only has, so he was part of the Dark Tower series until 2015 and then he moved off that project. Um, Nicolaj something is the name of the director now. I don't remember. But, uh, the Robert Landing series is really his only franchise. That yeah. he's been a part of. Everything else has been standalone movies and amazing movies. Ron Howard does oh, an yeah. amazing job. But we don't have him. I mean, this isn't a Ron Howard movie that he's making. No. And I won't lie, when he made, I mean, it hit or miss on the first two and the third one wasn't very good. When you come to the Robert Langdon, I don't know how well he adapts stuff because his track record is kind of meh. Well, because I think he's too, he, he, you're almost too big of a name at that point. Right. You know, I don't know if you've ever read. Speaking of adaptations, but the you know Steven Spielberg is behind. Is he behind all of the Jurassic Park pretty much, or just one? Who? Steven Spielberg. He did one. I don't know. I, I off the top of my head, I don't know. One. The book is, and the movie's great too. But that book is a little bit oh, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far different. So even I think you have almost too big of a name to adapt. Yeah. Now he's not. Uh, it's not like he's adapting a book. He's adapting a movie character it's into true. another movie. Yeah, and it's an orig- It's still an original story. It's yeah. not like it, Han Solo's origins were already known. I mean, they were, but Disney's going to rewrite them. But Are they? Well, That's not canon? What? Han Solo's original origin? I mean, anything that was written to him that was not in a comic book that they've released in the past five years oh, is some completely stuff. gone. I mean, they might, they might still use that stuff. But they don't The whole he was to. in the academy, he was a pilot. And... That's probably the way they'll go, but we, we don't know. We don't even know if that's the background they'll even start with. It could be post that and yeah. the adventures him and Lando had together. Um, but talking about Ron Howard and Star Wars, and you might know this, but here at the trailer park, we like to reveal things about people. And the mic has a particular problem with the Phantom Menace. I saw that someone dug up that stupid letter. Ron Howard, and I quote, Jake Lloyd is terrific in the film, which, by the way, is truly amazing. Now, the truly amazing part set aside, Mike, what are your feelings on Jake Lloyd? <laughs> I, think, I think anyone who's listened or talked to me knows my feelings on Jake Lloyd. I, 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 long story short, no one cares to see Darth Vader as a six-year-old whiny little brat. And that kid is a terrible actor. I don't know. You say, oh, he's only six or seven, however they're called. Nine. I don't care. He was nine? <laughs> nine years Even old. worse. <laughs> Um, he, he was he a terrible. Knew what he was doing. He was terrible, though. <laughs> there are pl- look, look, I'm sorry, but there are plenty of kids who are great actors at that age. In fact, there was one who was that um, that uh, that young black girl that got nominated for an Oscar, and she's what 11 or 12. Yeah, the name can't. I don't got anything. It's Quivin but she was really or something. Good. Yeah, it, something. But there you go. Yep. There's a benchmark to be set there. But I just wanted to let everybody know that Mike's problem with Phantom Menace is, that is not my biggest problem. the cartoony action nope. or Jar Jar Binks. No, I, I can shake Lloyd's Jake Lloyd. face. It is. And his voice. <laughs> and his voice. Now this is pod racing. <laughs> Shut up. All right. Sorry. Sorry, All Jake right. Lloyd. Well, we followed up with those things. We uh, started a segment last week that was pretty cool, and I think we're going to do it again. And that is foreign films and their abilities oh, to make some cool trailers. Pretty hard last week. This one is cool, and I feel like you're going to get it. But okay. uh, go ahead and throw it up there. Now, this movie came out a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, but you know, 20, this, 30 years ago. Uh, was it uh, Polish again? This is Czechlo- Czechoslovakian. Oh, Czech. Well, is it Jaws? It is Jaws. Okay, that's uh, the, that's the only giveaway there. So what I thought blood? was... Yeah, so what I thought, you, you can go ahead and read it. The Steven Spielberg is what I was hiding underneath there. Oh, yeah. Ameriki uh, film? Ameriki film, Steven Spielberg. Um, so what I thought was cool about this trailer or this poster, so the alien one was weird. 
Oh yeah, and it had nothing to do with a alien. rib cage and some fa- a face. And... But if you look at some people's cool, uh, like fan posters for films and stuff like that, like the this this like digital pixel background with the blood in the water, like I thought that was because it's iconic from Jaws. I thought mm. this was like a really rather than. I mean, it's a different interpretation that we American audiences would get, but this was a really cool our, interpretation. Our Jaws poster is super iconic. Yeah, it's true. There's the the swimmer with the giant shark yeah. going up. But I mean, you like you're you you have to interpret that that's the blood in the water, and that's kind of an interesting thing. I thought. Yeah, that that is no, yeah, that one was easy. That's for sure. Right. But that gave it away. Well, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't think of. Like, well, well, I'm blue. like maybe he'll think that's a dolphin or something ridiculous, and that's <laughs> well, America. I don't know. <laughs> American dolphins? <laughs> is that a movie? The Ron Howard American Dolphins. <laughs> um, anyways, so that's our poster of the week. If you see any cool of these posters, I guess I should say that because we're talking to a YouTube yeah. audience. If you see any of these things, comment Share below, them. show them, throw them to me. Um, it, it, because I'm it's one, really fun. I'm, I'm one out of two right now. There you go. Um, so let's talk about movie trailers. I have mine, but you always go first, or you I always do. used to go first. So we'll keep that going. So I know you guys have probably talked about this before, and it's been out for a little while. But I saw a, a, a newer, more extended trailer for the Dark Tower yesterday. Oh, okay. Oh my lord! Yeah, that looks amazing. I see. We've only saw the first one. The, this is the one that we it, talked about it on the podcast, but that was like I a guess month ago it, or that, so. well, that was a, this one has like Idris Elba, like he's like monologuing, mm-hmm. and he's talking about like I don't kill for this, I don't kill for that. I'm like my gun doesn't kill people you know this does and he's like shooting and then they show i don't know does he have like superpowers have you ever read the book nate Mm -hmm. does he is he like a supernatural being in some sense almost okay because because they they bring up some things in there and just based on the way he's like like at one point i swear to god he's shooting and like metals being thrown at him or being shot at him and he's like the bullets are just he's able to like take them and put them in his own gun i'm like this is what matthew mcconaughey isn't that where he does the thing where he holds the gun in the air and catches the bullets yeah so Matthew McConaughey is the villain in this film, or whatever it could be. He seems like he's the bad guy. Yeah. Again, I don't know much about <laughs> it. I plan on reading the book series. I've heard really, really good stuff about it. But this made me even want to see this movie even more. Which, even the movie doesn't, the, the trailer doesn't give you much about what this stuff is. Unless you already know what it's about, you don't have an idea. Unless, the only thing I can gather is Idris Elba is some sort of protector or guardian. And the this, the Dark Tower is something that needs to be protected or something along those lines because matthew mccann is talking about it's going to be destroyed you can't stop it so yeah, i didn't know the dark like this was actually about a dark tower yeah it's literally like about I, a tower <laughs> like i thought it was like that was like just the name a cool name for something and yeah, i know it's got some western post-apocalyptic yeah. vibes to it but... really cool uses of color it reminded me, it reminded me a lot of like watchmen yeah um in the fact that like everything's dark except for like action pieces become extra like whenever like a shot would go off mm-hmm. he's dark and his and his coats you know lit so black and white but then he shoots and it's a bright red and yellow flash i thought that was so cool yeah it looks really really cool um mine it's a little bit sad well it's not sad it was it was I touching s- the, the poster looks super sad the though. poster does look really sad but the movie's not sad it's good by christopher robin um and it is the story of uh winnie the pooh and the end uh milm A.A. Milne. A.A. Milne. Sorry. (laughs) See, I watch movies. I don't read books. Uh, Uh, There are Winnie the Pooh movies. Shh. Uh, (laughs) About three of them. Um, Anyways, it's it's the story of him and uh, their son, Christopher Robin, who um, has kind of names these these animals or the stuffed animals. And the father is Dominic Gleeson, um, who is, you know, kind of coming up with the stories for Winnie the Pooh. And, of course, it's, it's that success. What I liked about it, though, and I guess I, I kind of read into the story a little bit, but not really. I mean, uh, the real Christopher Robin like died in 93, I think, or something like that. I know. For some reason, I thought, I'm like, oh, okay, it's going to be about how this kid died, because I didn't really know the story. But no, it looks like it's, led, rather than being like a sad, it's more of a touching. Yeah. So it's not like this is going to have just a terrible ending, everybody's going to die. No, it's it's just a touching story about how that was developed. Yeah. I might be wrong. I don't know. Well, it's going to be sad to some extent. <laughs> uh, but it was directed by Simon Curtis, who did My Week with Marilyn and a bunch of BBC stuff. So kind of a, a newer guy on the scene. Um, but that is October 13th. Oh, yeah. That that I, didn't, I, can, I know the Dark Tower comes it's up this July, summer. July, right? isn't it? I think it's yeah, like I think a it's coming weeks. up in this month. Uh, next, well, within the, the next month. We're almost at the end of June. So, But we have a featured trailer. We do. <laughs> <laughs> 
We have uh, associate producer Nate yeah. in the house. Um, this week, and that is a cool movie. It's an adaptation of the book by Agatha Christie and a remake oh, of the... Oh, it's Ridley Scott? Yeah. Really? Okay. It's a remake of the movie from 1974. That's Murder on the Orient Express. I didn't know Ridley Scott was directing this. Mm-hmm. No, Ridley, it's Ridley oh, Scott's production company. production company. Kenneth Branagh is oh, directing you mentioned it that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. starring in it. But um, So just to go down the line, so most of this I, I am assuming is going to all appear in this train, which I love. I love that idea of standalone. We don't need to jump around locations. That's one of the cooler things to me. Um, but the original one was Ingrid Bergman and Albert Finney, a younger, young Albert Finney. I like Albert Finney a lot. Yes. Um, but this is Johnny Depp, Leslie Odom Jr., who, if you don't know, was the original... Uh, Aaron Burr on Broadway for Hamilton. Uh, Kenneth Branagh, of course, Willem Dafoe, Daisy Ridley, Judy Dench, Michelle Pfeiffer, Penelope Cruz, Josh Gad. Like, how can that? Yeah. <laughs> and they do this, this, you know, this nice idea that, like I said, these these single camera shots and this idea that they're going to all be together. I have not seen the original or read the well, book. Daisy Ridley. Yep. So I don't really know anything about it except for that it's a murder mystery. And anything that's Agatha it's Christie Agatha is, Christie. of course, that way. No, I, I don't know anything about it other than what it the actual the yeah, name Kenneth Braddock is, is the detective trying to find this out is really cool. somebody on this thing was yet. murdered. You haven't? No, I like the... Well, if we could do it with sound, YouTube. <laughs> but um, we don't want any of those takedown notices. No. Um, first of all, Willem Dafoe has an accent again. What kind of accent? Uh, it sounds a lot like his... Uh, Steve Zissou accent, so which by the way thought that was Pierce Brosnan. I was sure that was Pierce That's Brosnan, Brana, isn't but it's it? Kenneth Branagh, and I did not know that Kenneth Branagh was Lovelace in Wild Wild West. Yeah, not that that's the movie that you just go oh, to. He's like a, he, everybody remember Wild he's Wild such West. Such a, um, I think he doesn't always get credit for, but he is very much a character actor. Yeah, who he's can a put on? Actor he puts on. Well, he can put on anything. a bunch of different faces, and yeah, yeah he is the and that terrible, terrible film. Yeah. Uh, wicked wild wild all right <laughs> doesn't he become like a giant spider at the end or something he rides a giant yeah, spider, that's a right. giant I steampunk know. locomotive driven. cool oh the whole movie i mean that movie no. is really it's it's funny was, it's stupid it was will smith and who i cannot remember his name do you know do you got it kevin no klein. kevin klein thank you mike if you didn't hear mike <laughs> in the distance <laughs> um but that one's november 10th uh 2017 which, by the way, and so you haven't seen the trailer yet, so and we don't have any music, but Imagine Dragons is just having a, a great time with movie year, trailers. Huh? <laughs> Why? What song of it? Uh, uh, Believer, their new one. Oh, so because there was the one that they did for, because um, my wife has been listening to this. It's a for a soundtrack for that um, Me Before You, and they have a song mm-hmm. on there that was a big movie hit for yep. them called um, It's Gonna Get Easier. But the song is super depressing yeah. in the context of the movie. <laughs> Cause that, uh, but I feel like even a couple years ago when it first came out, uh, radioactive was used. Uh, radioactive obviously, was used heavily on. Um, uh, let's see, there's a whole episode of True Blood that ended yeah. that way. But I mean, in arguably one of the best, which they were all amazing, but one of the best trailers, Wonder Woman was the Warrior. Oh, the one. Warriors! I love that um, song. So, yeah, they are having themselves yeah. a little bit of a year. <laughs> so you know, if you hear that, anthems. you hear that that music. That's you know, uh, the movie theater stuff. So. What else did I have in that list? Nothing. Oh, um, now nah, we'll circle back to it. T- so main topic we were well, talking Miller, about. We yeah. talked about T.J. Miller, and we, I wanted you to watch. Did you finish Meticulous? I Ridiculous? did, and it is so Me- good. Did you, did you see how quickly I can Meticulous do that? Meticulously. Ridiculous? Ridiculous? Now I can't do it again. Meticulously ridiculous. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So he has left Silicon Valley, um, and the reason that he did was because. Uh, they asked him if he could do five episodes instead of ten, like be kind of a featured. And they, he's, he was recounting the story, and he's like, they asked him, he goes, if you could do five out of the ten episodes, that would be better. And he goes, oh, good, because I was asking, I was actually ready to talk to you guys about leaving. And they said, no, 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 we don't want you to leave. But he said it was a, a time for him to leave. And by the way, I, if, you have, if you haven't seen the finale, oh, I haven't seen the finale yet. <laughs> the, the why he leaves is hilarious. Uh, well, last I saw, he was in. Nepal or whatever with Gavin yeah. Nelson. So. Um, but uh, meticulous, re- Meticulously Ridiculous HBO special, he did a stand-up special, which, I mean, he's a stand-up comic, and he's been, I mean, think back to any movie of the last 10 years, he's been the comic relief or that weird sidekick. It's always been T.J. Miller, right up to what Deadpool. What movie was he in uh, with, it was, what's his name? The guy that voices the the main guy on... 
Jay Baruchel is the name. Okay, that's guy. He was a he was like a brother or brother in law in a movie where um where he has like some super hot girlfriend that no one could understand. And it was like he, hmm. he was the older brother that okay. picked on him, obviously. Yeah. But you know, again, that's that's going way back. Yeah. Or if you watch the special, he says, and it's even introduced this way, <laughs> star of Yogi Bear 3D. Three, yeah. <laughs> um, which, uh, but I mean, his special. There weren't a lot of reviews, so there was no um, official score. But currently, the average for Metacritic right now is sixty three percent, which for Metacritic is very good. Yeah, that is a good. Score. Metacritic is a much more um, in depth way of looking at the. I mean, it's mm-hmm. still it's still just a general. Yeah, Rather than you saying good, bad, like uh, Rotten Tomatoes does, the critic gives it a, a rating, right. and they adjust that. So it's a little no, bit more accurate. Yeah, um, I've I, seen funnier I, stand-ups, but... Yeah, but he was ridiculous, and he talked about it being absurdist, that it wasn't just ridiculous for the gag. He was He's very smart. He was making you can very he, specific he points. He, he made a couple yeah. little points in there that were very clever. The Derek thing was... Oh my, <laughs> I was just about to bring it up. He has a segment on this thing, and apparently he does it in all of his shows... Where he finds a Derek, a person named Derek in the audience, and he says, "Now it's time to call up Derek's parents and tell them to go f themselves." <laughs> and he literally and he does, does this. And he's talking to this nice old lady. He's like, "Yeah, this is T.J. Miller. I'm doing a stand-up thing." And the lady goes, "Uh huh." Like you know, like, like, typical like, okay. And then he goes, I-, "I hate to have to do this, but go f yourself." And then he just hangs the phone up. Like, <laughs> so I bring all this up oh, so that uh, we up. can talk about. Leaving Silicon Valley, stand-up special. He has the Emoji Movie coming out, which I mean may not be the may not be the top for us that we'd say is a critically receptive movie. But first of all, those movies make a lot of money. David it, Cross funded a lot of his better projects from the Chipmunks it movies. Might actually be a and decent it, film. It could be amazing too. But uh, even if you even if it's not good, you've got the act. The these are how some it. of these actors are able to to fund their projects. They do something ridiculous like this. Exactly. But he's the main guy in that, so it really seems like. In his post Deadpool world, a movie that was extremely successful, yes. and he wasn't just a random character. No, he was, he was the other guy on screen. Yeah. Um, that he is trying to now break out as his own solo. And I don't know, I guess I don't. Ehrlich Bachman even seems like, even though that's a stronger performance, mm-hmm. still seems like a secondary character to me. I don't know what a live action TJ Miller only I don't think comedy would look like. I could see him doing drama. To me, and I, but I think that's the way a lot of comedians yeah. go. I mean, look at um, Adam Jim Sand- Carrey and Adam Sandler. Adam did it Sandler for a did movies, that, yeah. yeah. So I think that they could do that just fine. But I don't. I guess I don't see him doing comedy on his own. No, I think he works better with a um, a group. Uh, and you're right, Ehrlich Bachman is a very. There's a lot of things that are. He's very. They're story centric to him. Like yeah. He's the focus. He's the main thing. But he you can tell he works well when he gets to play off of others, yeah. not when others are trying to play off of him. I don't know that seems like it's the same thing, but he definitely excels in these situations because he's got, let's face it, on Silicon Valley, he's got Kumail Nanjiani yeah. and Zach Woods, who I think is extremely yeah. underrated. And you've also got Martin Starr sitting there. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, Thomas Middleditch is funny as his character. Again, he's not a, I wouldn't say he's necessarily no. funny on that Tommy show. Tommy Middleditch is really funny because he is a lot funnier in person than he is on that show. Yes. If you ever watch yeah. him talk or do something, it's hilarious. Um, yeah. But I guess if, if you were to cast it, so if you were to say he's coming out with a movie and it's a movie about how, I don't know, his family, who would you, who would he need to make that work? Like who, who would, who does he need to stand next to for, for him to be a focus God, and not seem say. ridiculous? Oh man. I, I, it's tough to say because I have only ever seen him as the secondary guy. Mm-hmm. You know, you can look at some guys like, for example, like Seth Rogen. You can be like, I can see him running his own film, and he did. Mm. And then you know, knocked up and uh, everything, pretty good stuff. And he's a he's a lead in all that. Yeah. Um, but next to him, you'd need guys that are maybe on the up and coming. Yeah. You would need some. They have to be a little goofy, but you would need a straight man next to T.J. Miller because T.J. Miller plays a goofy straight man yeah. very well. That's what Ehrlich Bachman is. He's the straight man there. Yeah. Even though that com- even though all of his comedy is Sometimes not yeah, he plays very different roles, but he he mostly tries to play a straight man, yeah. 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 I think he would need people that won't steal spotlight from him. Yeah. And I think that's kind of can happen with the cast around him at Silicon Valley who are also very talented and have done their own things, you mm-hmm. know. They've been doing yeah. their own things, you know. I think if you could, I mean, maybe give it maybe give it 5 years or so. I guess I don't I don't really know how old Tom Holland is in my head. 
or how he actually how old he's he like is. Twenty three. I'm sure, but yeah, he's just so short next to everybody that he's in the Avengers. Well, of he probably is not that he short. He also has to stand next to yeah. Chris Evans at six foot three. And yeah. uh, but I feel like a action comedy in a couple years with him as the main and Tom Holland as a sidekick could do very well. I can see that with his original accent. <laughs> oh, and make Tom Holland British? is British. Yeah. I think that would be very funny. I also think, um, and I'm trying to think, I I really don't see another way that this really works without him going dramatic first. I think this is the only way that Chris Pratt is somebody who brings this up to me. I could see a romantic comedy even. Yeah. If you want to keep it a little bit serious but still funny. A romantic comedy. A romantic comedy, I think, with a more established act. Like if you did. You need a very. Kate Winslet and. uh, I was going to say, you you, you can't go grab like a Kristen Wiig or uh, what's her name? The other one of the other girls from uh, Ghostbusters, the other blonde, Melissa McCarthy, no. or um, Kate McKinnon, that one. Yeah. You could you could easily now, grab see, them they're, and they're, yeah, they're, they're silly, but you need to go and get like like an Emma Stone even who does a yeah. very good like she's very funny and mm-hmm. you know if you ever seen Easy A she is fantastically funny in that movie, but she you can she can also play the the dramatic pretty well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think Chris Pratt it had a a danger of this too because. He was the comic relief for, I mean, obviously oh, everybody's Parks funny, Rec, but for Parks yeah. and Rec, he was the physical and ridiculous comedy mm-hmm. section. When you go to Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, he's the leading character, but they very much emphasize the group. So yeah. he's just a focus point for the camera. You're A lot of times you're paying attention to everybody else. But then he does something like Passengers, where he makes a couple jokes, but for the most part, he's, it wasn't heavy drama, but he's not funny he's, he's just not, a guy he well he's no longer andy dwyer at that point but i don't i don't see i don't see tj miller just delivering just being a guy he's either got to go sad he's either got to go jim carrey and go something very deep mm-hmm. or he's gonna have to be in some ridiculous stuff paired up with a lot of other people you know what back to i i could see him pair up pairing up well with guys like jonah hill yeah. Michael Sarah. I mean, I'm sure. I think they've all probably done stuff together, but I think that's what could work with him well. It's got to be a like a personality wise or even stature. It's got to be like a smaller. Yeah, he's a very yeah. he's a very big personality. Like I don't want to see Will Ferrell and no and T J Miller because that's they not were father work. and son. That could be amazing. Well, actually, you there know you what? go. Hollywood, call us. Even better, if Hollywood because the, they're, they're thinking about, they're doing a Step Brothers too. Mm-hmm. If somehow one of them had a kid in their life. Yeah. I mean, it would make the most sense for John C. Right. Riley, yeah, because of the hair, right? But, but, yeah, it, it, Andy, Samberg. Andy Samberg, Andy Samberg, and them he too would work well together. But I feel both. like in that situation, though, you're still stuck because Andy Samberg would definitely take the limelight, yeah, and he would then be a, the the sidekick. He'd still and he's got to be that focus. But I guess we'll see. I mean, I'm sure, like I said, as soon as this emoji movie hits and makes its money, he'll start p- moving his own projects beyond stand up, yeah, and we'll start to see a. a his first big offerings. Um, last week we had a social media thing. Luckily, one was provided to us about two hours ago, uh, so we missed the picture of TJ Miller. But go ahead and throw that up. I that was Is I that put that on the list. Thing? Yeah. So Josh Brolin tweeted this out or Instagrammed this out um, earlier. Like I'm talking, like I got here and it was like six or seven o'clock and I didn't have anything for this. And this is Josh Brolin and like two guys that kind of look like Josh Brolin, which I thought was funny. <laughs> um, but uh, getting prepared for cable yes. for deadpool 2 cable is easily still one of my favorite characters and i mean look, you comics. can see it not that anybody had any doubt because josh brolin is like a cut big dude yeah but the squared off jaw the short hair and then of course he's getting he's getting blue screened for that well because yeah he is yeah. he's at the side the only other guy besides josh brolin was the one that's the general and avatar yeah you know that look he has the look and yeah. that's cable that's the look now acting chops no josh brolin right <laughs> he's amazing yeah i think it's gonna be cool and josh brolin can be a little bit more like i wish we could remember his name but uh the, who you're oh, talking yeah. about he was one of the first first people brought up for cable oh because he had the by look. fans but jo- he would have to be serious the entire time which i think josh brolin will have to be too to play off because it'll be that kind of relationship between. They the are. Two. That is the, their relationship in the comics. But is I feel like Josh Brolin's a little bit quicker. When you see some of his movies, he he can he doesn't have to always talk like this or something no. like that. He can kind of roll with it. Well, yeah, that's and that's the the Deadpool and Cable dynamic. Yeah. It's it's the it's easily it's the straight man funny man thing. Yeah. 
you know, but they're both. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Again, one of my favorite characters. I love Cable. Yeah. It's very cool. So, anyways, did you have another one? I think we got some time. A little Go bit. Um, what was the other one? Oh, DC Universe is releasing all 30 of their a- uh, animated movies into one giant box set. Really? Every single one they've ever done into one giant box set. For how much? I didn't, I didn't, I always thought it was the headline. When? Again, <laughs> I was just grabbing headlines. Don't bring me information like this. Well, I, I didn't, I just wanted to quick bullet points. Oh, I'd, also, did you I'd see, be on Amazon right now. My phone is looking at us. Um, <laughs> speaking of, but I know this, I wanted to mention it way back when, when we were talking about Spider Man. Did you see that they confirmed that uh, fan theory? Tom Holland confirmed the fan theory via Kevin Feige. He though. said he just got in the so there was a whole thing about this, and they were printed two different articles. <laughs> One that said Tom Holland came out and said, "Yeah, I, he, somebody asked him about that theory," and he says, "Yeah, I just talked with Kevin Feige and Marvel and like 20 minutes ago," and he said, "Yeah, that was something that was real." And then later, when they reached out, Kevin Feige said that that was an interesting theory and that in no oh. way was confirmed. So. I feel like we talked about how the uh, – oh, I think we talked about it earlier. I don't think we talked about it in the podcast. Um, it's always the separating what has happened in the conversation, not in these microphones. But uh, Tom Holland is having scripts hid from him because he gives away too many things. So I'm wondering <laughs> if being that this kind of Kevin Feige's, you know, mm-hmm. obviously information is being spilled out from him and we have the memes to prove it, that he doesn't know why people keep talking about things he doesn't want them to talk about. Right. Um I'm wondering if maybe that'll be a cutscene in Homecoming. Is uh, maybe he'll see sitting there, yeah. and, or or even or even not even a cutscene, maybe something that when he's because it looks like he gets into it in a serious way with Tony Stark and say, you know, I was there when you did this kind of stuff. So, which I don't really think we need that. At we all. don't, but I think it'd be a cool line. I don't think we need a flashback or anything. No, like that. I mean I don't think we, that needs to be Peter Parker. No, it doesn't. But like I said, if if they're, I always just thought I'm like that's such an unforgettable part. Like great shot, kid. Oh come on, that's yeah. so even for even for a comic book movie, that's <laughs> cheesy and corny. I mean, so. it was Iron Man two, so it's not oh, like the top gosh. cream of the crop. But I think uh, there are some one lines one cool thing about that trailer was that after the ship being blown up and you know Iron Man comes in to fix it, yeah. Um, when he was yelling about it, he goes, "I'm nothing without the suit." Like I'm like that's a really good dramatic moment because Robert Downey Jr. lately through Civil War and Avengers two has been pulling off ridiculousness and sarcasm as sarcasm sarcasm <laughs> and sarcasm <laughs> sarcasm as really funny and then going intensely dramatic yeah and it looks so good and it's so well, jarring it's that that line in um, Cap three where he's like he's my best friend Tony yeah. and he's like. So was I. Or like, the dang. like, yeah, the oh, he, I don't, I don't, I don't care. care. He, he killed, killed my mom. mom. Yeah, it was oh. so, it's so good. I think it's interesting to see Tom Holland, Peter Parker, who's going to be witty and sarcastic and ridic- rid- ridiculous. That's Spider-Man. meeting Iron Man, who's on his own, funny. But when they go to have this serious conversation, and I, th- I think that could be a really interesting moment. Uh, in any case. This was a much more planned episode it of was. the Trailer Park. Uh, and you can go ahead and start that outro. Uh, I have been Dave. I have been the Mike. AudibleTrial.com slash Womp We didn't bring that up again, but get yourself a free trial. Uh, if you're watching us, well, first of all, follow us. All, follow me on Twitter at TheAlien512 and Mike. WS the Mike Speaks. Or go to Facebook.com slash Womp to see everything that we do always posted all the time. But if you're following us on YouTube and watching us here, make sure you hit that subscribe. And if you liked what we said, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like what we said, or if you think we look stupid, just give us some comments below. It's we know YouTube. It. We understand. What's we know what happen. YouTube comments are for. Um, oh, you can also follow us on the gram, as the kids say. Yeah, there you at go. Wampus Slayer. Mike's on the gram. Yes. Uh, Josh Brolin's on the gram. <laughs> I feel like that's not a coincidence because we hang out with Josh Brolin. That's, we need like an unconfirmed thing. To show <laughs> not but in any confirmed. case, this has been the Trailer Park. You guys have a great day. End of the video.